So a while back, I was doing some work on this Game Boy Advance SP, trying to figure out why I was having such a weird intermittent issue with it. And it took me uh, like a half dozen hours before I finally figured out what the specific issue was. Uh, and I'll, I'll throw some links in the description to the videos if you want to take a look at that. But long story short, it was having intermittent problems booting games. And ever since I found out what the issue with this particular Game Boy was, I just decided, screw it, I'm not even going to bother fixing it, I'll just use it for parts. And I've since used it to fix a few other Game Boys. Um, notably, I sourced a um, volume potentiometer from it, I sourced the charge IC, I got the link port, so on and so forth. This thing does still technically boot, but you may notice that there is no... Uh, SRAM module on this. I pulled this when I ran a um, diagnostics cart on the on the Game Boy and it came up with a memory error and as soon as I pulled this I found quite a few dead traces under the SRAM chip. I decided you know it's really not worth fixing. Um, just a lot of effort to try and figure out which traces need to be patched and then either run a patch under the chip and then try and solder the chip back down or solder the chip back down and then run traces up and over to the other side, uh, patches rather. That that just, that seemed like a whole lot of effort for um, something that wasn't really worth it. I don't know. Um, anyway, along comes this board and uh, I think I might finally try fixing this because between these two boards, I think I have everything that I need to make a working SP. Now, you might notice, oh, well, Mako, that board just appears to be missing a uh, LCD connector. That's an easy fix. Yeah, that's not the only thing it's missing. Uh, apparently, someone decided to desolder the CPU and SRAM and battery connector. Beyond those parts, I don't know what works and doesn't work on this board. Uh, and honestly, the only thing stopping me from testing it was the lack of a battery connector. But I, that's something I'll get to eventually. I have the SRAM here. Um, I haven't bothered resoldering it back down. I just tape it to the board when I'm not messing with it. Um, but this board has all the parts that this board is missing and vice versa, uh, except that the traces aren't dead on the SRAM. But anyway, it's quite a long intro for uh, this thing. Uh, this is a custom build that one of my buddies did and he sent to me for troubleshooting. And to be clear, I don't take commissions, but if one of my friends asks me for a favor, you best believe I'm going to help him out to the best of my abilities. But he showed me some pictures. He would boot his Game Boy, and it does boot. And you'll see that intro is relevant at some point, but, but look, at, look at the text. Like, this is my normal flashcard. That's not... That's not how the text should be looking. And, you know, as far as I know, it does boot. Oh, now I'm getting a file error. I haven't really tested it that much, um, but if we put this cart into a known working Game Boy, You can see my menu structure is a little bit more, or my folder structure is a little bit more legible. So that got me thinking. Instead of spending hours and hours troubleshooting, like I did with this board, let me just walk through the same test sequences that allowed me to discover the problems with that board. So we put in the same Pokemon cart that I always use for testing. Works fine, no issues with it. You might notice something familiar. It's getting stuck at that black screen, the exact same black screen that my other game was getting stuck on. It shows the Pokemon logo, it's starting to boot the game, but we got nothing. There's no sound, nothing. I don't, I don't know if sound works on this thing, it's... I haven't taken this apart yet, but... Anyway, instead of taking it apart and going through all the same cleaning and troubleshooting steps that I went through last time, let's just start with the test cart. We're going to go into the wrong menu option and then reset it. We're going to go into aging cartridge 
and let it run a test. And you see it fails on the memory and then freezes. So this cart is, or this Game Boy is having, if not the same issue, at least a similar one. Hopefully this one will be fixable. But let's go ahead and get it, let's tear it down. Let's find out. Ooh, nice choice, my dude. All right. I think that's the right size. So I'm fairly certain I already know the answer. And, uh, oh, you know what? That is looking, that is looking pretty promising. I think that's an easy fix. There's some spots on the SRAM. Oh, it looks like it, I don't know what it is, but it's not the encapsulation bubbling up. Now, if I recall correctly, there were a few parts on this somewhere that needed to be re-soldered. So let me just continue the tear down and double check everything else looks copacetic. Plus, I don't like doing the soldering in the case if I can avoid it. I believe we have brightness controls. Yep. need to get that desoldered before I can do any work here. side. And let me just give it a quick once over here. Eh, everything looks good. Alright, so let's see if it is as easy as just clearing that short. Luckily, it's really easy to do soldering wise. We just drop a little bit of flux on there. And we'll just swipe it to make sure. I'm just gonna get all of them, just in case there was one I didn't see. Usually there isn't solder on these terminals, so I don't know what kind of work has been done with this Game Boy. But nonetheless, let's see if it was that easy. I'm just going to plug it into my own screen. Rather than having to try and juggle it. Mm. That no brightness control backlight, I fixed it by the way, there's no brightness controls, it's just not soldered to that.
staging cart. Extremely useful for this sort of thing. It still boots, that's a good sign. Gets further, memories of pass, hardware's all good. So it looks like we got off pretty easy here. I think when my bud sees this, he's going to be kind of disappointed because this this sort of thing is within his ability to repair. I just don't think he knows enough about the hardware to be able to figure out specifically what the issue was. All right, let's try that. And let's see if my menu structure makes a little bit more sense for our file structure. Hey, how about that? Let's boot that and let's double check that we have working sound because that wasn't working before. And we're good. So I wonder why there was no sound. I could have been related to the shorted memory address. There we go. Easy peasy. Let's go ahead and get this thing smashed back together. Right. And I suppose I can do them a solid here and grab... Nope, not that. one of these boards here. Here it is. I've been buying these things for like six bucks a pop. They're totally destroyed and they'll never boot, but there's, there's good usable parts on them, like... Volume potentiometer, which is not coming off. A lot of the time these don't come off and I'm afraid to keep tugging on it because I don't want to snap the stem off. So instead I think we'll just lift and replace that. Because I have a baggie full of parts and in this baggie is a volume potentiometer. And that's probably easier than uh, finding one that I can salvage. So I'm gonna use hot air to lift this up. Starting to go. And there we go. I don't know the proper way for lifting these things, but hot air seems to be the best way. Get these solder pads cleaned up. Speaking of, this might be the reason why they're solder on the memory pads. We'll get our spare parts if we never get to use them. Yeah, yeah, I have the uh, 
original DS parts. That would work too, but... I have standards for my builds, and I have standards for builds that aren't mine but have my name attached to them. And they're totally different standards, so... We're gonna put the right part in this Game Boy. Just shorted it out again. Trying to get this thing soldered down flat. Or at least as flat as feasible. Ta-da! Let's double check it's working. And then... Oh wait, no, I gotta clean that up first. Because it won't work with those shorts that I just introduced. Instead of using flux, I use the solder wick because I want it to be as pretty as possible. Why not? All right, let us try this again. Now we have volume controls. I'm gonna try this actually. That's a good sign. Test 
AJ. Cool, that still works. Let's see if we've got sound. good. Let's get it cleaned up and reassembled. That was easy. I I honestly expected I'd be pulling the SRAM. At least based off of what happened with my Game Boy. Alright, so let us clean up some of the flux. Should be good to go. Just gonna double check that's working right. Could use some cleaning, I suppose. This isn't the right tool for that, though. I have an idea. I don't know where they are though. I recently picked up some new tools that I think will be really handy for cleaning out uh, like ports and stuff, uh, especially headphone jacks. They sell them at Harbor Freight and like anywhere that sells air tools. Um, I don't know what I did with them though. I put, oh, I know where they are. Found them. Okay, so I started cleaning up and then never finished. Uh, but I found these at Harbor Freight and it was like three bucks for the pack, so of course I couldn't help myself. Uh, but the idea is they're designed for cleaning air tools. They're basically just pipe cleaners, but uh, designed for cleaning and not for decoration, but I figure you, know, you can jam one of these bad boys in there. Uh, unfortunately, they, they're they kind of, I don't know, they, they've got some lead in. I don't think they'll work for this, but they should be pretty good on like a headphone jack. Uh, like PS Vita, for example, you know, you just jam that in there. Unfortunately, that won't work here, but I think it was a good effort. Just want to clean out the ports. We don't want to get isopropyl alcohol all over the board. There's no point in cleaning up the whole board. I'm just wiping off the areas that I already got wet so there's no weird spots when it evaporates, but I think isopropyl alcohol when used on boards should only be relegated to parts that actually need to be cleaned and not Oh, I'm just going to slather all over everything. So, parts that you just got flux all over. Because we don't want to get isopropyl alcohol in this switch, or this one for that matter. Um, 
because evaporation may take a while and it won't work right until it does evaporate. And I've seen people get like isopropyl alcohol inside their screen. That takes years to evaporate. And that is so much better. Look at that. No flickering now. All right, let's get this bad boy reassembled so I can pop it back in the box to send back to my friend. And so he can finally gift this to the person whom he made it for. fresh solder on that joint so it's not so crusty when I reattach it. think of that in the first place. Unfortunately, my friend, I do know the backstory as far as how this happened, but your screws are beyond saving. I think sometimes it's best to just wait until you can do the, do the job the proper way with the correct tools. Uh-oh. I don't want to discolor that. There's isopropyl alcohol on the desk. Eh, I'll be careful. got the uh, square nut in there for the battery cover. This is actually supposed to go like that. Bunch of adhesive stuck in this screw, but it's a good screw. There we go. We'll jam that in the battery compartment. The other one right there. 
right there. And we're good to go. The only thing it's missing is the little acoustic sound dampening material damping that goes between the speaker and the shell provides like a dust barrier but I don't actually have any extras right now to spare or I'd hook them up but I don't think there should be any issues but we'll just double check I will not set that in the puddle okay good I didn't. I just touched it with my finger. All right, if that first one passed, those will pass. And let's try one of the most expensive test carts. Hey, it gets further. And what do you know? And we have brightness controls. Let's do one more thing back to the test cart. Cool, we're good to go. Well, my friend, I will get this cleaned up and packed up nicely for you and I'll get this sent back. I hope you enjoy. And for everyone else out there, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope this helped you diagnose your Game Boy. Um, or not. Maybe it was just entertainment. I don't judge. Whatever. I'm, I ain't your mama. Uh, anyway, the cart I used, uh, this is extremely useful tool to have if you're going through lots of uh, Game Boy hardware. This is a Nintendo ROM, so I can't share it. But you look up AGS Aging. I don't know, I thought it said in here somewhere. Yeah, AGS Aging um, ROM. Maybe you find a link to the Cutting Room Floor website. Maybe you don't. But if you do, that's probably where you can find the ROM. Um, otherwise, you know, thanks for watching. Have a good day.